Are you passionate about the Bible, but sometimes struggle to put its teachings into practice in your life? Well, you've stumbled onto the perfect podcast. Today, we're going to dive into scripture, unpack its meaning, and have a lively discussion on how you can use God's word to truly transform your life starting right now. As we explore the scripture, I'll provide you with some thought-provoking questions to help you delve deeper into how these teachings can be applied to your life daily. Remember, if you don't apply the wisdom you find in Scripture, it's just a collection of captivating stories. But when you take those words from the pages and infuse them into your life, get ready for your world to light up with transformation and inspiration. Welcome back to the podcast. My name is Wayne and you're listening to My Christian Observations. And I believe this is episode number six. So today we're going to take a look at Matthew 13, and in this chapter, Jesus shares several parables. There's just a whole string of them, including the parable of the sower, the parable of the wheat and the tares, the parable of the mustard seed, the parable of the leavened bread, and a couple other ones that we're going to go over specifically in this episode. Now, collectively, all these parables convey various aspects of the message and the teachings of Jesus that are related specifically to the kingdom of heaven and spiritual life. Jesus really uses these stories to explain the nature and the growth and the significance of the kingdom, and he describes it as something of great value and worth seeking. So let's take a look at the following two stories, which really only take up a total of three verses in Matthew 13. So as usual, I'm going to be reading from the New King James Version of the Bible. So if you can grab your Bibles and follow along, we're going to be reading the parable of the hidden treasure, which is in Matthew 13, verse 44. And it reads, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid. And for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Now, the next parable, which is actually just the next two verses, is called the parable of the pearl of great price. This is in Matthew 13, verses 45 and 46, and that reads, Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he has found one of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So two parables, three verses, very short. They both share the same message. Now, they're so short that I'm going to read them one more time for you. I'm just going to go straight through and read verses 44 through 46, and then we're going to talk about a few of the key elements that Jesus is pointing out. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like treasure hidden in a field, which a man found and hid, and for joy over it, he goes and sells all that he has and buys the field. Again, the kingdom of heaven is like a merchant seeking beautiful pearls, who, when he has found one of great price, went and sold all that he had and bought it. So two parables talking about a man who found a treasure, basically something that, uh, that was of such great value that in both of these, he kind of risked everything. He hid them. He went and sold everything he had so that he could purchase that one thing, right? Either it was the hidden treasure in the field or the pearl of great price. So what exactly is Jesus trying to tell us? Well, there's a few key elements that Jesus is going over, trying to teach us in these three verses. The first is about the kingdom of heaven. And I love how in these parables he keeps saying, he starts them all by saying, again, again, (laughs) again. He's trying to hammer it into the people that are listening to him over and over again, just the importance of what he's trying to speak. So the parables begin with the phrase, the kingdom of heaven is like, and this is always to indicate that the parable is meant to teach something about the nature of God's kingdom or the spiritual realm. Now, as we talk about the hidden treasure and the pearl, they represent something of obvious, immense value, and often this is interpreted as salvation or a deep and personal relationship with God. It's something so precious and desirable that you'll actually sell everything just to get it. So let me share a little bit of my testimony just to make you understand how when you become a follower of Christ, how this actually gets applied in your life. So you've probably heard the terms, the veil was lifted from my eyes or the scales fell away from my eyes so that I could see the truth. Well, when that happened to me, the realization that I had lived the first 40 years of my life worrying just about myself and that really our whole existence isn't supposed to be about us, when when I realized that, 
And I understood that heaven and hell were real, that God was real, that Jesus was real, that these stories actually happened. I, in a sense, went and sold all that I had. For me and my wife, it meant quitting a job that I had had for 27 years and was very comfortable in and selling my house and actually relocating several hours away, downgrading our housing a bit, starting new careers. And ever since then, God has worked with me and brought me into a state where I can work in ministry and help to teach others about just how important this is. Now, again, the man in these stories represent anybody on their spiritual journey who comes and finally finds the opportunity. They finally find the understanding in the meaning of the truth and the kingdom of heaven. So two short parables with a couple meetings, an explanation of how important and how special the kingdom of heaven is and how they compare that in the story. And as Jesus relays that to us and compares it to hidden treasure and a pearl of great price in the stories... And then, of course, includes a man or a person who represents us. Very simple, very short, very well structured. Now, also in the story, the man, upon discovering the treasure or the pearl, he's so filled with joy and conviction about the value that he sells everything he has to obtain it. Now, this, of course, is symbolic of the idea that the kingdom of heaven is of such great worth and great value that one should be willing to give up everything, including worldly possessions and attachments, simply to obtain it. Let's step back for a second to remember something Jesus told us in Matthew 10, verses 37 through 39, which is along the same lines of how important these things are. Jesus says, He who loves father or mother more than me is not worthy of me, and he who loves son or daughter more than me is not worthy of me. And he who does not take his cross and follow after me is not worthy of me. He who finds his life will lose it, and he who loses his life for my sake will find it. So what Jesus is saying there speaks of the same importance that we're supposed to attribute to the kingdom of heaven. It's so important that even your father, your mother, Your son, your daughter are not as important as these things. The meaning of the parable can be understood also in several ways. The first one is about the value of the kingdom as we've been talking about. It emphasizes the immeasurable value of the kingdom of heaven or the salvation in the Christian faith. The story suggests that the pursuit of a spiritual relationship with God should be your highest priority and worthy of any sacrifice in your life. Number one, basically. It also talks about the commitment and dedication. The parables encourage believers to be fully committed and dedicated to their faith. Just as the man was willing to give up everything for the treasure or the pearl, followers of Jesus are encouraged to put God's kingdom above all else. And also, we can talk about discovery and grace. It's the idea of discovering the hidden treasure in a field and how it suggests that sometimes people might stumble upon the opportunity for salvation or a deeper connection with God unexpectedly, and it underscores the idea of divine grace. I know the day that I got saved, the day that I woke up, the day that I'd been born again, I didn't wake up thinking that. It just kind of happened. So overall, the parables of the hidden treasure and the pearl of great price serve as a powerful reminder of the supreme value of the kingdom of heaven and the need for a wholeheartedness and wholehearted commitment in one's spiritual journey. It should encourage us as believers to prioritize our relationship with God above the worldly possessions and distractions that are all around us. How can you apply this into your life today? Well, the parables underscore the idea of prioritizing what truly matters in your life, so it's important to take time to reflect on what's most important to you. Identify your core values and your priorities and consider whether they align with your actions and your decisions. Next, the stories talk about really about seeking what matters in your life. Now, just as the man in the parable actively sought the hidden treasure, you can actively seek the things that hold true value in your life. Whether it's your faith, your relationships, or personal growth, or perhaps a meaningful cause that you devote time and effort to, seek out those things that truly matter. Because believe me, if you haven't figured it out yet, the world will distract us all in a thousand different ways. And in the end, most of it is just distraction, entertainment, and it doesn't really matter. Now, these stories also talk about sacrifice and commitment. They teach that obtaining something of great value may require sacrifice. 
Now, in your life, evaluate what you're willing to give up or change to achieve the most cherished goals and values that you hold true to. This might mean letting go of unhealthy habits, reassessing your priorities, or making sacrifices to invest what truly matters. Now, the fictitious person in these stories was literally willing to give up absolutely everything to attain what he wanted, the kingdom of heaven. Let's talk a little bit about joy and fulfillment. So the man represented in these parables experienced great joy upon finding the treasure, and it's a reminder that the pursuit of what's valuable should bring happiness and fulfillment in your life. So remember to seek to find joy in your journey as you align your actions with your values and your priorities. And now here's another piece, very important. It's about sharing that treasure. Now truly, in a broader sense, these parables also encourage acts of generosity and kindness. Just as the man found the treasure, you need to consider sharing your own blessings with others, whether it's through acts of charity or volunteerism, or maybe simply being supporting and caring of other people and individuals and relationships in your life. I remember an old analogy where somebody held their hand up in front of me, and you've probably heard this, and they ball their hand up into a fist, and they say something along the lines that, in your fist, you won't drop or let go of what you have, but also because your hand is closed, it's not open to receive anything else. And by unballing that fist, by opening the hand up, not only can you receive everything that God wants to give you, but you're also in the position of sharing or letting go with what you have to others. So incorporating the meaning and the lesson behind these two short parables into your daily life is going to include reflecting on your values, committing to what you deeply value, and seeking fulfillment and joy in the pursuit of those values. It should remind you to find and embrace the hidden treasure in your life, whether they're spiritual, relational, or personal, and then to prioritize them above superficial and fleeting things and concerns in the world. Again, those things that try to consume us all on a daily basis. You've got to let all that go and focus on truly what's important. Well, this was just a short teaching on two very short parables, but I'll be back again with you soon. So thanks for listening and remember to be the light. Thank you so much for joining me today. I truly hope that what we've discussed has not only deepened your understanding of God's word, but also opened your heart and eyes to the incredible role that you play in bringing scripture to life and sparking transformation in your own life. Remember, you're an essential part of this amazing journey, and together we're going to uncover even more treasures from the Bible that will help us to enrich our lives. Don't forget to check the show notes in the podcast description for links to free PDF transcriptions of my podcasts and other downloadable teachings. And please don't forget to hit that like button subscribe, and most importantly, don't forget to share this message with a friend or two that you believe need to hear it. I can't wait to reconnect with you in just a few days as we dive even deeper into the transformative power of God's Word. Until then, stay blessed and be the light in somebody's life.